Alright then gang, so we saw in the last video that we created our very first cloud function to add a new admin. Now we want to call that cloud function from the front end so I can send along an email to that cloud function, it makes that email an admin, that user an admin, and then that admin can do different things. So how do we call that cloud function? Well, before we actually call it, I just want to edit the template a little bit. So in index.html, underneath the navbar, what I'm going to do is just paste in a tiny bit of HTML. So all this is, is a form with a class of center align and admin actions. The style is margin 40 pixels, auto, and a max width of 300 pixels. So it's going to sit in the center, narrow. Then inside the form, we have an input type of email. The placeholder is user email, and this has an ID of admin email. It's also required. This is the ID we're going to use to grab a hold of this input later on when we go to make this user an admin. Then we have a button saying make admin. So if we save that and view it in the browser, it's going to look something like this. So the idea is we type in a user email and we make that user an admin by pressing this button. So when we press this button, I want it to call that cloud function and make that user an admin, right? And send along this email on the data. So we need to use cloud functions now. And by the way, at the minute, everyone can see this, whether they're logged in, logged out, an admin, not an admin. Doesn't matter, but we'll sort that out later on. But anyway, we need to use cloud functions in our front end now. So in order to do that, we have to make a reference to the cloud functions SDK. So we've got so far the app, auth and Firestore. Let's alt shift and down to create another reference. This time, this is going to be Firebase hyphen functions. OK, and down here we need to initialize that. So I'm going to create another constant called functions and set that equal to firebase.functions. So now we have a reference to the Firebase functions service on functions, and we can use that inside our other file, auth.js, to then call the Firebase function. So let's do this right at the top. So I'm going to create a little comment, and that is just going to say add admin cloud function. OK, so what we need to do, first of all, is get a reference to the admin actions form. So up in the template, we just added this. This form has a class of admin actions. We want to get a hold of that because we want to attach an event listener, which is going to be a submit event. So let's now say const admin form is equal to documents .query selector, And then inside, we want the dot admin hyphen actions. OK, so now we have a reference to that. Let's attach the event listener. So um, admin form dot add event listener. Oops. Event listener. And the event will be a submit event. And we take back the E as a parameter inside this callback function. My typing is terrible at the minute. Anyway, the first thing we want to do is say E dot prevent default to prevent the default action of the form um, reloading the page. So we've done that first of all. Then I want to figure out what the user has typed in here. We want to get that email. Now that input has an ID of admin email. So we can use that to grab that value. So I'm going to say const admin email is going to be equal to selector, And we want the admin hyphen email and we want the value of that so dot value okay so once we have that now we can go ahead and create a call to our cloud function and send along this data so how do we do that well first of all i'm going to store this call in a constant so we say const add admin role because that was the name of the cloud function you don't have to call it this i'm calling it this just to keep them both the same then I'm going to set that equal to functions, which we can access because we initialized it at the bottom of this page down here, right? Functions. So now we can say that is equal to functions dot HTTPS callable because we're calling a callable function. This is how we call it. And then the name of the function we want to call. And that was add admin role. Oops. Make sure you do this correctly. Admin role like so because remember that is the name of the function we're calling so this 
and this have to be the same. So this there makes a reference to that function, right? It's not actually calling it yet. It's making a reference to it and storing that inside this constant. Now, the way we actually call it is by saying add admin role, which is where it's being stored right here. So we grab that variable or constant and then we invoke it because this returns a function, right? A reference to a function. Now we're invoking that function. So this goes ahead and calls it. We also need to pass some data when we call it because we want to pass the email to that cloud function. So we'll say the email property of the data is going to be the admin email, which we grabbed up here. OK, so this object right here that we're sending that represents this data object right here. Now we've attached an email property on that data object. And therefore, when we say data email, that's what we're accessing. OK, so we're sending this off now to invoke that function with this data. And this is an asynchronous task. It takes some time to complete. Therefore, we attach the dot then method and we bring back a result into a callback function when it's done. So for now, let's just console.log the result. So what should ideally happen here? I'm not saying it's going to happen, but ideally what should happen is when we fill out this form, and we have an error, by the way. So let's have a look what that is. Click on this. OK, we've messed up a comment somewhere. So let's now scroll down to that. Don't know how that happened, but let's move that back up. Anyway, what should happen is when we add a user's email into this form and we click Make Admin, we're listening to that click event. We're sending this user email and calling the, uh, the cloud function. We're making that user an admin by attaching a custom claim to the admin. And then remember, inside the function, what we're doing is returning this message if it's successful. OK, so then let me first of all log out. Then I'm going to log in. And by the way, like I said, everyone can see this at the minute, but we'll sort that out later. I'm going to log in as Sean at the net ninja.co.uk. The password is test1234. Login and make Yoshi at the net ninja. Or rather, I'll make myself an admin. So Sean at the net ninja.co.uk. I'm going to make myself an admin. So make admin like so. Now we should get a response in the console. And that response is success. Sean at the net ninja.co.uk has been made an admin. Awesome. So now, my friends, I should have that custom claim of an admin attached to this user, which is pretty awesome. So in the next video, I'm going to see how we can access that claim from the front end so that we can do something with it and maybe hide certain information from anyone who is not an admin. So I'll see you in the very next tutorial to do that.